Let's Talk Horror. Today, I am joined by the host of the Mood for Days podcast, Andy G. Andy, my friend, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful here in Toronto, Canada. Thanks for having me on. It's a blessing. No, I'm so honored to have you. So for the followers of mine that don't know, can you give us a little bit of information about your podcast, what you do over there? Yeah, most definitely. So my podcast came out about a year ago. And um, I interview guests from all sorts of industries. We talk about all kinds of subjects, have weird and different conversations, and we shoot the shit. And it basically comes out once a week or every other week. And you can find me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. And my Instagram is um, mood for days underscore cast. And you can find me on Instagram. To make it easier for all of you, I have all these links right down here in the description. So all you got to do is click these links down here. Make sure you're giving him a follow. Make sure you're checking out the podcast. This guy works his ass off. He deserves for you to listen to him. And I'm a big fan. So, man, this really means a lot to me to have you on here. Um, so like I said, guys, make sure you're clicking the links down here in the description, giving him a follow. You're not going to regret it, I promise. Um, so we are recording now. It is January 19th. We are the day before the inauguration here in the U.S. So luckily you don't have to deal with the stress of all this tomorrow, my friend. <laughs> oh, it's, uh, the live feed is uh, nonstop here in Canada. I can't imagine. It's got to be like living above a meth house. Like you're just looking down like, what the hell are they doing down there? I remember four years ago, all of this thing started out as a joke for um, <laughs> Donald Trump. And four years later, like... I'm a complete different person too. Four years later, a lot, a lot of things have changed in four years, I must say. Yeah. And it's one of those things where I don't like to get too political on here. It's just yeah. all I ask is for people to be peaceful and kind to each other. That's all, no matter if you're left or right, love each other. And I'm guilty of throwing shade myself. So it's hard not to be that way. But just remember tomorrow, the president's still going to be the president. And the people that you associate yourself with are still going to be the same people. So just please, guys, this has been long done by now. But just remember to be respectful and kind to each other. Our political opinions does not mean that we are a bad person or a good person or better or worse than anybody else. So please just treat each other with love and respect. That's all I ask. Um, so you guys have probably already clicked down here for Andy. We talked about the future of his podcast, the right now. But Andy, my friend, I want to take it back to the past. I want to talk about the first horror movie that you ever watched and what got you started in horror. And your first horror movie was? My first horror movie ever was the legend himself, Freddy Cougar. Yes, and let sir. me tell this you, I was seven God. years old. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, had, I actually had the shirt and the claw myself for Halloween. I was dressed up yes. as Freddy Cougar this past Halloween in 2020. Love Freddy, man. Always been a huge Freddy guy. I've gone on record many times saying A Nightmare on Elm Street is the best horror movie of all time. Um, I think if you can take out that ending with the blow-up doubt coming back in the house and the stupid Freddy car, I think it's the greatest movie. I think it's the perfect movie if you could take that ending out of there. So I'm a big fan. And I love talking about it. So um, you said you were about seven years old. Do you remember who you were with the first time you watched it? Oh, yes. I definitely do know who I was with at um, seven years old. I was with my uncle. He was in his early 20s. And um, just to give you a brief <laughs> background of that, he actually joked around telling us that he was going to put on a children's film. <laughs> and next thing you I know... I like him already, man. Yeah. Next thing you know, you got the, de you got the devil on TV. We had no yes. idea what the hell was going on. Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool and it's so funny because we all have that uncle or brother or grandpa or you know even our dads that would do that prank mm -hmm. on us you know uh sit out outside your window and night going Ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> or showing you a scary movie and making you think it's a kid's movie <laughs> we all had that person in our life so um nightmare on elm street is it's a hell of a movie to talk about and there's a lot of the scenes in this movie that could affect certain people certain ways so what scene from a uh, nightmare on elm street affected you the most so the scene that i'm going to describe to you it was very short very quick but it definitely had the most impact on me in this freddy in the whole entire freddy series i must say as we all know there's um six parts 
and I don't know if they include Freddy versus Jason in that um, series right. there. However, it was when um, the opening scene, when um, she was in the bathtub, the main character in the bathtub, and at first you're just thinking nothing's going to happen. She's just kind of just washing up, getting ready. Cut, they cut the scene and they go to the next. However, she started dozing off. You could see a little bit of her dozing off. And out of the blue, Freddy's claw came out of me from the bathtub. And right there, that moment, it scared the hell out of me. Not only did Freddy's claw scare the hell out of me, the, the one thing that came to my mind is, as a seven-year-old, I do not want to take a bath. Ever again. <laughs> ever again. After watching that scene. That's how much of an impact it had. And even up until this day, I still kind of jump when that scene comes. Yeah. And I watched Freddy. It's a heavy scene, man. Yeah. It is. Definitely is. Because right after that, you have him taking her down into the water, you know, and her going down in the water. And it's just like such a dark feeling. Somebody said one of the worst ways to die, in my opinion, would be that mafia style drowning where you, yeah. have, you know, the cinder blocks tied to your legs and you're thrown in. Like that's what this reminded me of when she's going down in that water. Well, that too. I, I'm not the, I was never the kid to hold my breath long underneath water too. So mm -hmm. that kind of discouraged me too. When you played those water right. games or who can hold their breath down the longest, you're always scared of the boogeyman coming out of anywhere in all kinds of places too. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. See, the one that got me for water was Jaws. After Jaws, I was done. I was like, yep, sharks in water, water's in the toilet. I'm done. <laughs> So let's talk about, we talked about what scene affected you the most, but when you think about A Nightmare on Elm Street, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Well, it's that opening scene. So right there, scared the day, living daylights out of me from the opening scene. Why? Because when those special piano notes hit and they start playing. Oh, yeah. And also, like, I wasn't expected to see Freddy right off the bat. And the film took mm -hmm. a very big risk showing Freddy at the very beginning of the movie too. And you, and you only see Freddy for under what, 10 minutes in the whole film. And yeah. we get to see Seven him minutes. right away. Yeah. And we get to see him right away, which scared the living hell out of me. And <clears throat> that scene, again, the opening scene where the girl's having a dream and it opens up mm -hmm. in, in, in the midday, no, in the nighttime, an open uh, space. And she's getting chased after Freddy. And then all the effects, too, were creepy as hell. Oh, yeah. I love I love the special effects in this movie. I love the fact that it's all practical, too. Um, so we talked about which scene affected you the most. What you what the first thing that pops in your head. But now I want to go a little bit different here. What is your okay. favorite scene from A Nightmare on Elm Street? My favorite scene from A Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, this is very um, competitive here. Because I do like, so part three and Freddy's Dead. Uh -huh. So these scenes um, are my favorite. Also, they're kind of <laughs> sickening and my, <laughs> turns my stomach every time. So that scene in um, part three where the kid is actually walking <laughs> when Freddy's playing with him like a doll and throws him off the window, like almost like yeah. he committed suicide. That scene is one of my, is my favorite. And then what's tied with that one is in uh, Freddy's Dead where the guy's playing with the, he's building up his earwig and his ear's about to pop up and Freddy's just scratching, scratching on the metal and his ear just pops. Yeah. Holy shit. I remember that. So those yes. two, those two are tied for my most favorite scenes in the whole um, Freddy's series. Mm -hmm. See, it's funny because I remember I have a soft spot for Freddy's Dead because I went and seen it in the movie theater in 3D. And I remember it scaring the hell out of me. It, like you watch it back now and it's not a good movie by any stretch. But no, no. man, that movie in 3D as a little boy, that was so awesome, man. I watched Freddy's Dead in 2019 <laughs> Halloween and I was laughing. Mm -hmm. Like to me, then, it, like yeah. back then, it was freaky as hell. And then now you're watching it like today and it's like a comedian show especially when they're in the scene playing the video game and then he goes oh, into the oh scene gosh, I and can't it becomes in the game <laughs> now you're playing with power i got the mm -hmm. power
for glove. Like, I, I, I was not into it, man. Um, so, <laughs> now, when we talk about the original Nightmare on Elm Street, there are not very many kills in this movie, but they definitely no. went with quality over quantity. So, yes. in the, A Nightmare on Elm Street, what is your favorite kill from A Nightmare on Elm Street? So, my favorite kill definitely has to be, um, I believe it's the first kill when the boyfriend and the girlfriend are in the room together. She, um, they're getting it on. She's underneath the covers and Freddie's just, just, I don't know, just going at her. And the guy just sees her yeah. going all over the place. Doesn't know what the hell is going on. She's screaming her heads off. The, the, the girl and the boy come to the door and blood just flying everywhere. And she's hitting the roof, bouncing off the walls. And then Freddie throws the girl, his girlfriend into him too. He goes flying off. And then that's when like the cops come in. And it's just like a mega blood scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tina's death is always one. And it's funny because mm -hmm. all the ones on here are really memorable. You've got Tina's death. Then you got Rod being in the jail. Uh, Johnny Depp in the waterbed. I mean, yeah. There's so many iconic scenes in this movie. That, that's another one. I was going to bring up the Johnny Depp one. But I, I, mm -hmm. it was also very impactful with all the blood going everywhere. But yeah. that one, the very first kill, has to be... Yeah, they did a great job one. on this movie, even practically. Yeah. Tina's? Did you say Tina's? Yeah, Tina's. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we talked about A Nightmare on Elm Street. That was your first horror movie. Now I got to go scream on you here for a little bit, Andy. What's your favorite scary movie? What is your favorite <laughs> horror movie? Okay, so my favorite horror movie, and I... Like, here's the thing. Is this, like, true crime, true detective? Is it horror? I think to be I horror, consider, I, to, to me, there's a wide variety. I'm one of the people that I yeah. consider The Sixth Sense to be a horror movie. So okay. I think that you could go as open as you'd like. So if you consider it a horror movie, I will consider it a horror movie, my friend. Okay, so most people on here, this is my, it's just my opinion. I loved it. It blew me away. Mm -hmm. And it was kind. Of, it was pretty original, and it's going to be the original Saw movie. Yeah, dude. Honestly, big fan. Pig mask is always here. Always. <laughs> so, that is awesome, man. <laughs> that yeah, is I'm a, amazing. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, I'm a huge fan <laughs> of the first Saw. I think Lee Winnell and James Wan. I think that was such an original idea, and it was something that was so simple, but that made it so fucking terrifying. Because you have this original idea that could really happen. There really could be this crazy guy out there that's doing these sadistic things to you. This isn't yeah. a monster in the woods. This isn't a guy in your nightmares. This isn't a vampire or a werewolf. This is a human guy. <laughs> this and, is a real guy. <laughs> yes. And I completely agree with you, my friend. That is such... It's, I love that movie. I definitely love that movie very much. So, um, I'm glad. I'm glad that I was able to um, bring that up. I'm glad you asked me that question, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big, big Saw fan. I'm a big, I'm a big Lee Winnell and James Wan fan. Like, I'm uh, so excited. Malignant, the new James Wan movie coming out. I'm very excited for that. Yeah. Um, but, my friend, we always end this podcast with the same question. You already know my answer because I've already told you. But going back to A Nightmare on Elm Street, we're ranking it on a skull count. Zero being the worst, five being the best. Now, we're not ranking it by how great the production or quality of the film is. We're ranking it by what it means to you how it affected you, and how you think of this movie today. So on a scale of zero to five skulls, zero being the worst, five being the best, Andy, how would you rank A Nightmare on Elm Street? Okay, so um, I'm going to go biased here. It is still a memorable film, and it's always going to be in my heart. Um, I started collecting a lot of Freddy Krueger's things this time in my life. I got to share to watch Freddy Krueger this past Halloween, um outside on our projector screen and let me tell you for some it was their first time ever watching that film and believe it or not not a word was spoken throughout the whole film you can hear a pin drop yes. while the film was screening like that's how impactful this movie was um mm -hmm. so i'm gonna have to give it literally a five out of five just because yeah. we're still talking about this film almost 30, like 35 years later, we're still talking yeah. about this film. Not only me,
but there's so many other horror fans out there in the community that have always brought this film up and, and still are. Oh, I mean, you got people that go out and buy finger knives and sweaters and fedoras yeah. because that's how much, yeah, right there. I got it too, brother. You got it too, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things that, and the thing about Freddy Krueger is, look, I'm a, to me, the, the holy trinity of horror, the three in the trinity have always been Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th. Now, yes. with Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees, these two are behind a mask. There was a different yes. guy playing it a lot of the times. But Freddy Krueger, up until the remake, was always Robert England. No mm -hmm. matter what, it was always the same guy. He was always doing the same thing. Yes, he got a little goofy towards the end. But they brought that back with Wes Craven's new nightmare. And he was absolutely yes. terrifying again in that movie. So I completely agree. I think that Nightmare on Elm Street stands the test of time. And like you said, it still holds up today. People that watch it for the first time today... Because it's not goofy, the first Nightmare on Elm Street, the effects in it. Um, mm -hmm. You watch the effect of the, the practical effect in a Nightmare on Elm Street with them pushing on the latex above Nancy's bed. And then you watch it in the remake with the CGI. It looks goofy in the remake. Exactly. But in the original, that practical looks so terrifying. And the blood coming out of the water bed or Tina being drug up the wall while Rod is sitting there. And you see both of them. It looks practical and it looks real. And mm -hmm. I think that's why A Nightmare on Elm Street will withstand the test of time because it looks, for being shot on such a small budget, they knew what they were doing. And Freddy Krueger, as we stated earlier, he's on screen in this movie for seven minutes. And he makes that much of an impact in seven minutes. That he's that scary to you. That shows the cast carries this movie. Nancy's great. Um, Johnny Depp obviously is Johnny Depp, but the whole movie, the cast in the whole movie is just absolutely phenomenal. And if you could take out the last five minutes, this would be the perfect film in my opinion. So uh, everybody, like I said, make sure you're clicking the links down here in the description, showing him some love. Andy, don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Everybody else, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.